Jones University was founded by a bunch of crazy people. The moment of truth has come. Now we have to see if this house fits into the ascenseur in the lift. If this doesn't fit, this means we have to carry this house all the way along to the Lageso. I think, I think fix it. <laughs> OK, I think. What do you think? Um, I founded this movement with two, three guys in front of the Lageso registration office, which is the office where refugees need to register. So this is what you need because it's getting cold at night. Yes, it's cold. Very cold, very cold. But you sleep here. Yeah, you sleep here. Yeah. No, we don't have a problem about the uh, food and the water, okay. but the problem is here. Yeah, the line. Of course, the yeah. line and the, we don't have a place to stay. And they had the problem that they needed to stay overnight to get the number, to get access to the office. So they slept during the winter season outside in the street, in the cold. And I was thinking to myself, how can this be? We are one of the richest country in the world. How can this be that people need to sleep outside? So I started to fetch my drill and fetch some wood that I found randomly in the street and got to the Lageso office and we started to build. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, they, they were so happy. Refugees from Syria, Egypt and Iraq, they started to, you know, to organize lamps, like, you know, neon lamps and put it over their the shield and celebrate it as a Christmas house. So that was the beginning of the Tiny House University. I understood that we need to rethink the way how we build and organize space. Tiny House is for me more than just, you know, a hobby or something that you work on as a, as a craftsman. Tiny House is a philosophy. It deals with uh, different values. Sustainability is a value. How much water do you need? How much electricity do you need? How much space do you need? How much food do you really need? Hi, my name is Noam Goldstein. Um, I'm 28 years old and I am part of the Holy Food Tiny House project. So we're just gonna go through a tour of our garden where we're preparing the food um, and the soil for the Holy Foods House. So this garden is, um, has been here for about 20 years. It's the garden of my parents-in-law. Um, and we've been coming back and forth to this house for around three, three to four years now. My first idea with the, the food sharing um, was to create a movable food sharing house. Um, if you just look at here, this is probably the oldest tree. It's a cherry tree. It gives amazing fruit. To have a house where people can come share food, um, bring food and take food as, as needed and to have a kitchen to be able to make the food, transform the food, conserve it, dry it. This whole bed, it's all filled with strawberries. And so within, within this garden, we really want to take the idea from the Holy Foods House to be able to show the cycle of how we'd like to present it in the Holy Foods House. So when you grow your own food, you see the, the whole process of how a plant grows, how the fruit becomes whole and ripe, and when you pick it, when you cut it, when you cook it or transform it, it's just an amazing process. And we really like to experience the exchange that we have with the plants to be able to feed the, the plants and the plants feed us as a whole, whole life cycle um, of experience. value of a tiny house lifestyle is community. We make the rocket. And the rocket is, uh, starts like this. One thing.
what can you share? Because in a tiny house, of course, you cannot own everything on your own, like a um, fridge or a wash machine. Said people live in a community, they do everything together, they cook together, they eat together, um, they go hunting together, uh, and it, it just fulfilled and created such an amazing life from my point of view. When you compare it to today, um, the, the single individual just lives alone and has no re real interaction and no real energy within them. And that's what we're trying to promote in, in our tiny house, in the Holy Foods house, is how a person would be able to do that as much as possible. So going back to our real roots. <laughs> My name is Jan, and this is the 100 euro apartment. Here, this is the area where I sleep. And this is my kitchen. I'm gonna show you this. This is my living area. Here is the bathroom. My clothes rack. And I have a little secret, because here, I have a, some more space. And up there, I have also a secret space, which is behind the wall, and I have completely my own privacy there. I can imagine that in 10 years, it would be very normal in Europe to have tiny houses. Every 10th person will, will have a tiny house. A tiny house costs like 20,000 euros. So in 10 years from now, I see the tiny house movement as a place of encounter. Um, I really wish and believe that we'll be able to create small communities with tiny houses, um, to be able to live off grid, to be able to communicate and interact and share more things. In 10 years, I see the tiny house movement spread all around the world. I hope in 10 years that we only live with that what we actually really need. I see the tiny house movement in 10 years as a thing that sparks joy.